A Roman walks into a bar, holds up two fingers, and orders five beers. Folks, welcome to This Week in History. We got some splaining to do, so let's get to it. In 1783, clouds of sulfur dioxide, about 120 million tons of it if you're keeping score, from the Lakai volcanic eruption in Iceland that started back on the 8th, continued to wreak havoc across the globe, reaching as far as France by this point. Between a fifth and a quarter of Iceland and tens of thousands of Europeans, at least 23,000 in Britain alone, died due to the resulting famine and, well, the fact that there was sulfur dioxide in the air. Lungs just don't like that. The eruption eventually led to the Nile River failing the flood as it usually did during monsoon season, leading to a famine that killed about a sixth of the Egyptian population. It also rained sulfur over much of Europe, including large hail that killed large amounts of livestock. Oh, and the resulting winter was cold enough that the Mississippi River froze in New Orleans and ice packs were reported in the Gulf of Mexico. Nobody that we know of died from the last part there, but hey, you never know. The resulting famine from the eruption is also claimed by some as a contributing factor to the unrest amongst the French, leading to the whole revolution, heads will roll, put the short guy in charge thing. And yeah, I know, Napoleon wasn't short, he was five foot six and was always surrounded by his imperial guard, who were typically above average in height. It was just a joke, come on now. On June 22nd, 1839, Major Ridge, John Ridge, and Elias Boudinot, three powerful leaders of the Cherokee Nation who had signed the Treaty of New Echota, which ended up resulting in the Trail of Tears and the deaths of thousands of forced out Native Americans, were all assassinated in revenge for those deaths under Cherokee blood law. On June 23rd in 1611, the crew of Henry Hudson's fourth voyage, during which they were mapping Hudson Bay, got stuck in ice and had to wait out the winter on land, mutinied against him, and set him adrift with his son and seven loyal crewmen. Hudson nor anyone else in that small boat was ever seen again, and we still have no idea about what happened to the man set adrift in a bay named after himself. On June 24th in 1374, an outbreak of St. John's Dance. hit Aachen, Germany, causing people to experience hallucinations and begin to jump and twitch uncontrollably, or dance, until they eventually collapse from exhaustion. We don't know exactly how many people were involved, but it was quite a few. Plus, it kind of spread out from there to nearby German towns and eventually to other parts of Europe, affecting thousands over several years. And what exactly caused a crap ton of people to just randomly start dancing until they dropped or died? Well, we're not sure, but it may have been an offshoot of St. Anthony's Fire, which was ergot poisoning, caused by molded rye that caused hallucinations, pretty much naturally occurring LSD. Or perhaps it could have been a form of mass hysteria or stress, as the typical villager of the time didn't lead the most fulfilling life, and it's possible that a lot of people just snapped. The world may never know. And here's this week's installment of WOW, so that's a thing that exists. So that's where that song from Roger Rabbit came from. Good to know. On June 25th in 1848, the first instance of photojournalism took place after a photo of the June Days uprising in France was published. Also published on the 25th, but in 1947 was The Diary of a Young Girl, which most people know by its unofficial title, The Diary of Anne Frank. In 1876, the Battle of Little Bighorn, also known as Custer's Last Stand, took place, where U.S. cavalry under the command of George A. Custer were wiped out by a coalition of Northern Cheyenne, Lakota, Dakota, and Arapaho under Sitting Bull. This was a major victory in the Great Sioux War of 1876, but the defeat hardened the American resolve and the country really rallied behind military expansion at that point. On June 26th and 684, Benedict II was chosen as Pope a role he held for 11 months before his death. And speaking of popes, in 1409, Alexander V was crowned pope after the Council of Pisa, joining Pope Gregory VII in Rome and Pope Benedict VII in Avignon. And yeah, that means there were three popes at one time. In 1794, the first military use of aircraft, in this case an observation balloon, occurred at the Battle of Fleurus, 
during the French Revolutionary Wars. On June 27th, 1844, founder of the Latter-day Saint or Mormon movement, Joseph Smith and his brother Hiram were killed by a mob while in jail in Carthage, Illinois. Five men ended up being tried and acquitted for the killings. In 1905, the crew aboard the Russian battleship Potemkin mutinied against their officers, taking command of the ship in one of the first steps in the 1917 Russian Revolution. By the way, a film was made about the ship in 1925, I actually own a copy of it, and I highly recommend it to anyone interested in the history of cinema, or the history of propaganda, either way. You may be familiar with the step scene if nothing else. And at birthdays this week, we've got Georges Brandt, Swedish chemist and the discoverer of cobalt in 1694, American general and first governor of Michigan, William Hull in 1753, and explorer George Vancouver, guess what was named after him, that's right, Saskatchewan, was born this week in 1757. And that's just gonna about do it for this week. We'll see you here again next week, same Squirrel Time, same Squirrel Channel, and remember, sometimes things are hard, but we just gotta keep on keeping on. We're all in this together, folks. We'll see you next week.